So before I kind of get into all of this, um, I'll give you a, a kind of a background of my, you know, history within blockchain, how I even got in there. Um, you know, one thing that uh, uh, intrigued me was not so much the crypto. I, I titled this, it's all about the blockchain, not crypto. And you'll, you'll learn as you kind of get more embedded with the technology, understanding, you know, adapt development, first principles, all of that good stuff. Um, typically when people find out that you're doing it, they often have more questions on the crypto side. I get that a lot, um, kind of given in, in the history of, of being in this space. And so the education going back to what you guys are doing is phenomenal because you, that's the whole goal. We, we have this uphill battle that a lot of us here at Truffle and Consensus recognize, and that's the legacy media. Uh, they don't know what they're talking about. Um, they try, but it's clickbait. And unfortunately, it, it, it gives this persona and this kind of um, preconceived notion that really doesn't isn't kind of aligned with what blockchain really is. And so it's really more of just more media attention. So we're going to see a lot more of this as you go. Um, but so I started my journey back in 2016. I'm over here in Seattle, Washington. So the Walt Disney Company is actually affiliated out of Seattle. Um, I ran into a gentleman by the name of Joe Rhodes. Um, he is uh, um, somebody that kind of introduced what Bitcoin was at, at that time. I hadn't already understood what it kind of was. I, I read the white paper. Um, but more importantly, uh, he explained the nature of the technology uh, more so than the cryptocurrency side of it, which kind of intrigued me because the whole the act of decentralization, security, the scalability and the potentiality of what blockchain can do in our ecosystem that ultimately disrupts what we're used to now was was exciting. So they they originally built this. It's called Dragon Chain. Um, definitely check them out. But they built the protocol in Disney in 2016, um, probably late 2015. Mickey Mouse and blockchain wasn't really a thing. Uh, and so Disney actually let it go um, at that time. And so what I did, as well as my business partner, Wes, we kind of helped launch and take that uh, to where really what Jag and Chain turned into, when they open sourced it, we got an Apache 2 license, and they built this, this kind of first hybrid blockchain here locally. And that's when I became more and more intrigued with the idea of the technology. Um, and kind of fast forward, I'm going to go through a little quick timeline. Uh, I sat through my first ICO, if many of you remember that in 2017, that was a crazy, crazy time. I remember sitting with uh, the CTO um, of a, a company called Look Lateral that is no longer in existence, but watched them uh, get at that time $2 million worth of ETH and Bitcoin collectively uh, in about 10 minutes. Um, that's how fast and that's how crazy that ICO boom was. Uh, everyone was super eager to, to contribute quote unquote, into hoping that their token that they um, invest in becomes the next Bitcoin and it 10x their value. Um, and it was just incredible to see that, I, although I was definitely a little bit confused as to how fast people are making a lot of money um, in that particular realm of the ICO phase. Uh, then I started, uh, once we got the consulting firm got going, uh, we started kind of working more mostly within the Seattle realm of other blockchain affiliated companies, you know, leveraging white papers, marketing efforts, strategic partnerships, kind of really kind of emphasizing and getting a little bit into the education space as well on what is blockchain and the idea behind what what it can what's capable of and whatnot. And then we were then acquired in 2019 by Consensus. Um, Joe Lubin liked the idea of our network and, and our affiliation and kind of just the, our brand and what we represented it. So he wanted us to kind of come on board with Truffle. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard Truffle before. If you haven't, please learn it. It's very important. But um, I assume most people here understand it. Um, we came on a Truffle where there's about seven developers at the time. We grew it to be closer to a team size of about 25. Um, a phenomenal team. Um, loved every minute of it. Um, and at that time, our goal was to kind of monetize, you know, the idea of Truffle. Um, we had a lot of representatives and presence in the marketplace, uh, kind of becoming the de facto blockchain tool for smart contract development. And it very much still is, uh, but it is free and open source. And so our kind of challenge was how do we make money out of Truffle? And so we initially kind of pursued building a, I'll make it quick, but a CI CD. Uh, that would monitor your smart contracts. So when you deployed on mainnet, oftentimes 
there can be a lot of uh, craziness that happens and anomalies. And so we would want to be able to detect that and then come up with like a one click debugger and some solutions for the developer to be able to fix that before they lose a ton of, you know, ETH at that time, gas, all that good stuff. Um, and really what happened is when we were on our own truffle, um, we were getting to a point where we wanted to be vestible. We had a couple of VCs that are very much interested in us, uh, but then COVID happened around, uh, I think it was about February of last year, we were down to legal terms. Um, and then the whole world kind of just took a back seat, including VCs. Um, a lot of them were getting a more kind of comfortable jumping into the blockchain world. We, I, one thing I learned about venture capitalists, the traditional ones, is they, they very much wanted to get into blockchain. They were just very hesitant and skeptical. Again, this all ties back into education because a lot of them had their their preconceived notions about what blockchain was and really what it wasn't. And so at that time, even just pitching to VCs is oftentimes it was very much education, developer tooling, this is what it does. And so it was definitely an uphill battle. And to get to the point where we were um, gonna hopefully get to a convertible node was exciting, uh, but again, life happens. Um, and so the good news is um, consensus came back to us and Joe Lubin, co-founder of Ethereum, uh, decided to create a separate consensus, if you will, called Consensus Software Incorporated. And essentially what he decided to do, the original consensus, if you're familiar with it, um, it's very much like an incubator. Um, it's a hedge fund kind of funding various blockchain projects and protocols. You've probably heard of like Gitcoin is a great example of that. Um, the goal of which is to either come on into the ecosystem and get funded uh, to build and contribute towards E2 or to spin out and become your own entity in which they would work out an equity deal on that side. CSI is more about kind of creating a software company, which consists of Truffle Now, MetaMask, Infura, Pegasus, Codify, um, Quorum, and Diligence. Um, and their goal now as they move forward is to kind of pursue the, the fintech space, um, leveraging DeFi. That's definitely where we're seeing a lot of noise and a lot of good practical use cases uh, behind the idea of where blockchain can get into these enterprises um, towards adoption. And the exciting thing of what you guys are all in and right now is whether you're going to eventually down the road, create your own startup, teach other people about this. It always comes back to education because it's a new technology that's ever growing, ever changing. And even us within consensus, Truffle, MetaMask, we're oftentimes continuing to try to, to keep up just because there's so much going on. Um, so that's kind of where Truffle landed within Consensus Software Incorporated. At the end, I'll, I'll send out some links about I know, what we're doing. Um, obviously, we are hiring like crazy. I'll definitely plug that in. Uh, we have over 120 open positions. Um, and then I, I definitely kind of affiliated myself quite a bit in the blockchain ecosystem. I'm a big fan of Decentology. They do a great job um, of what they've done with Dapstarter. Uh, blockchain Training Alliance is another one that I'm affiliated with in terms of blockchain education. Consensus Academy is a, is a wonderful boot camp that's coming up in September um, to kind of take that next level if you're kind of a novice in blockchain development. Um, they kind of go more granular and, and it's a lot more of a beefier program. So that's kind of the history behind me. So I'll kind of get into the history and hopefully can get you guys excited about, um, you know, what's happening in the space, where it came from and where we're going. And, and a lot of this might be things you already know, but I like to, re to reiterate all this as kind of an objective reminder of where things were and how far we've come and how advantageous it is to know this stuff now, because realistically, we haven't evolved yet to where we're seeing mainstream adoption. Um, mainstream adoption for me is when mom and dad and grandma can use something that's blockchain related and have no idea how it works, but the user interface is spot on. Uh, Venmo is a great example of that. My grandma knows how to send me money over Venmo. She has no idea what the technology looks like. Uh, I think the user, the UX, if you will, becomes um, something that we're definitely wanting to address. Um, so kind of getting into it, the, the kind of the beginning of the days of blockchain development, especially kind of around where I was in, um, a lot of us were self-taught, even the founder of Truffle, Tim Coulter, um, oftentimes was creating scripts, you know, with the Mocha framework and using Java script and, and um, some just really kind of understanding how before even ERC-20 tokens were, were leveraged and used, how to just automate things, uh, how to send crypto into other wallets, how to sign transactions. These things were, these were more of a foreign concept. And so generally you didn't have 
very much in the YouTube realm like you do now. Um, there wasn't many resources other than a few books. Um, I don't know how many of you read Mastering Bitcoin. Um, great book. And obviously there's been a lot more iterations on that. Uh, but at that, the time, that's about it in terms of like curriculum goes. So that's where you started to see this formation of like blockchain societies. Uh, big fans of BAF. I think they've definitely represented what a blockchain society enables uh, because th the goal of which isn't to grow, particularly the organization, but to give back and to contribute and ultimately to organically make use um, of where blockchain can be by, you know, encouraging and educating, you know, future developers to build on you know, this platform. Um, so I remember even trying myself to understand this. I didn't have much resources. ERC20 tokens, if you remember, they started to come out. They started to make more sense. That's when he, that's right around 2017. Um, the ICO boom, which I talked about a little bit, was um, crazy. I mean, I, I know a lot of them and personally just have friends that have done it. Uh, it's unfortunate because I say this as you kind of get into the space, you're going to hear the word ICO quite a bit. Um, just because it's still got a kind of a negative connotation tied to it. As much as I'm involved in Truffle and, and, and all of consensus and, and whatnot, I still to this day get asked about ICOs. Um, or are you an ICO? Are you going to take my money? Or is this a tokenomics type of thing? And it's, it's the challenge that unfortunately kind of will always be there. Uh, but I think it's a good one because education will hopefully trump that, that philosophy that blockchain isn't tied into a get rich quick scheme, um, which is oftentimes kind of the con the concept behind um, why they think blockchain is. They kind of affiliate it and get you no know, thanks to the legacy media. They do a great job of kind of construing the the notion of what the technology is, and they kind of fall in line with more about what it's not. And ultimately, it is back to going and getting clickbait. Um, I've been told I've been part of a scam. It's a fad. It's not going to last forever. Uh, it's all about centralization power. You need it. Uh, real world use cases is you can't handle large amounts of money in your own wallet. That's why you need banks because, hey, we got great stories about people that have either passed away and have not you know, given out their private keys. So all that money gets burnt. Um, they generally go to that, um, which is, is an anomaly. It's very minimal in terms of that kind of stuff. Um, then we moved into the PLC MVP stage, which, again, I, I love that because proof of concept and minimum of our products are, are always been part of even in the web two sphere as, as you're in blockchain development or just in web two development um but that became at that time standard for those that wanted to invest um in the quote-unquote blockchain protocol or project or whatnot i saw a lot of that um they were merely white pager or white papers or one pagers uh, that never went past that um, it was just a bunch of cool text by a developer that was very persuasive and people would see it and they get excited and they say, all right, here's my money. And then I'm sure you know many of them. They have long gone. They're no, they're, there's not even a product developed out. Um, and it's, again, unfortunate. And it's, it's drawn back this kind of negative stigma to the technology. And I'm saying all this right now to set up some, some good news. Um, so it's all negative. But I, I like to do this because I think it gives right mindset and the right framework as to why am I becoming a blockchain developer? What do, I, what do I want to do? What are the real world applications that come from building a decentralized app? Um, and then how do I go about doing that in the right way? And then same time, I'm going to continually having to educate whether it's clients, feature partnerships with folks, uh, everyday users, or even just people that are kind of taking in a, a peek into the our Web3 world. Um, they're going to have a lot of questions. So having this knowledge is going to be um, very, very incredible. And then I'm sure you, you've probably seen this, I've been, this kind of been this buzz with celebrities um, getting involved and, and tokenizations and um, creating their own blockchain projects and um, or even backing an ICO or some kind of project, raised 20, 30, 40 million dollars. Um, it was absolutely insane. Uh, I didn't know what I was getting into at 2017. I thought this was just going to be kind of a shit show. And to be quite honest, I didn't want to step out of it, but I was so burnt by it because I had the right understanding of blockchain development and, and what it was about and the technology. Um, but the world seemed to look at it completely differently. And it was just, it was a constant kind of fight with, um, you know, where I was trying to represent the good use cases, the practicality uh, behind the technology. And I was going against, you know, 
many folks that were just very dismissive and were, were quite frankly just burnt out. Um, and that's even like existing developers um, that kind of got into it, thought it was kind of good. And then they got caught up into that you know world in 2017 and, and decided to back out because they realized this wasn't wasn't all it's out cracked out to be, um, which, you know, is unfortunate, but sometimes that's how it goes. So now we get to the maturation within blockchain. And I think, and I'll say this so many times, education and developer tooling are, are very much the linchpin on how we can kind of springboard into um, not just enterprise adoption, but like the individual users to adopt whether whatever decentralized application that you probably already have something in mind that you want to build. And as you kind of learn how to create it via the technology that's going to be taught throughout these next few weeks, it's exciting to know that the tooling behind it is what's going to make it work because bad tooling uh, will push away and, you know, new developers that are kind of interested in the technologies. I won't list names, but there are several other blockchains or, or decentralized ledgers, DLTs, or protocols, whatever you want to call them, um, that have absolutely terrible tooling. You probably know of some. Um, you probably even tried some if you haven't. Um, hopefully you stay away from it. And it's just a bad experience. It, it, the code is, is very awful or it's ugly. Um, at one point, solidity, and it kind of is a little bit. It's not the greatest, but we've definitely gotten a lot better. Um, so tooling is important because tooling and education tie together because you often when you want some kind of an adoption, you need to teach people on how to do it and you need to get good tooling with good documentation, good tutorials on how to make it work. Um, being in, in my world and kind of looking out at other protocols outside of the Ethereum ecosystem, I'll see that's number one complaint is they don't have any developer activity and they're recognizing that um, tooling is becoming the the emphasis on making it work um i've had so many um at the time when we were on our own with truffle being kind of part of the integrations team and running that um, we had a lot of other blockchains you know ask us hey can we get truffle into our our ecosystem our blockchain um, because they recognize that truffle is really recognizable it's very easy to use it's awesome uh, and the tooling that was built you know initially with some of these other protocols were really meant for the internal developers um, but weren't quite ready for scalability within the, the ecosystem they wanted to build out. And so for them, they saw it as super advantageous to use a well-recognized um, blockchain tooling like Truffle to get into. And for me, it was really interesting just to see how fast sometimes protocols are built. And even and dApps were kind of the idea behind why they want to make it um, was oftentimes kind of overlooked with developer tooling. Um, and then another thing we'd like to call is the DX, um, the developer experience, um, super important. So Truffle and Fira, MetaMask, you're probably going to get introduced to all of these. If you haven't already used it, they're wonderful. Um, I think MetaMask is, um, if you've ever played around with swaps, it's pretty cool. Um, that's just a whole side plug, but the DX is definitely going to be something as we kind of grow and mature in the ecosystem, there's going to be more tools out there. Um, Truffle has a lot of competitors, um, a lot of great smart contract, you know, frameworks that have been created. Um, Hard Hat is a good one. Um, but I'll, I'll say when it comes down to it, um, when you start kind of building on, on a framework that you're comfortable with, you then start to evangelize, teach. And as you go out into your little worlds and, and kind of teach this stuff, Naturally, the, the one that wins is the one that's most kind of comfortably used. The developer experience makes sense. And right now, Truffle continues to still have the edge. So thank you, everyone, if you're users of it. Um, big fans. So that's awesome. Um, now we have resources everywhere going back from 2017 where there's very limited. I'm sure you've had um, plenty of time to hang out on YouTube. Um, a lot of good um, on-demand resources like Blockchain Training Alliance. I'm good friends with Greg at DAP University. Uh, he's got some great content that he puts out. Um, you know, Ivan on tech. I know Ivan very well, good guy, and he's put out some great curriculum. And, and the nice thing is everyone's kind of contributing to the education piece, not so much as competitors, but really making sure that they get it right. And it's, it's teaching new developers from the Web2 world that are interested in Web3 the right way of developing decentralized applications. Um, there's quite a bit a, of bad content out there uh, on YouTube. Again, I'm not going to plug those names. I don't want to do that. But um, there are some that unfortunately just have bad, you know, bad practices, um, more shortcuts promising you to become a blockchain developer in two weeks 
and and then ultimately uh, guaranteeing you a job, all of that stuff. It, it's not that easy. It's definitely it takes time and it, it's very strategic. Um, but a lot of great resources out there. Consensus Academy again has a boot camp coming out at the end of the year. Um, something I'm excited about. And a lot of the nice thing is with colleges at the collegiate level. Um, they're starting to find ways of getting blockchain um, accredited into their universities. Pepperdine is one that's starting to get into. They have a blockchain foundations um, accreditation for uh, project management. So with PMP and PMI um, is exciting to see that. Um, and then the more that colleges kind of get on board with that, I think you're going to see a lot more of a, a, um, a growth because it, it really starts more at the collegiate level, in my opinion organizations like Bath that really put more focus on that is kind of what's always appealed to me. Um, and I'll get into, I ran Truffle University for a little bit and that was kind of my main emphasis too. And that's kind of how I uh, got to know PG and whatnot um, is just at the college level, whether it's university, a, a tech school and globally, whatnot. Um, they all had the same kind of pain point that they were experienced is they wanted, they were comp sci, you know, students that wanted to have blockchain as part of the curriculum but it was it was very cumbersome and it takes a long time to get new technology uh implemented into the coursework um and I, I got that pain i'm over here in seattle washington so the university of washington um approached me and we had a conversation about that very problem um of how do we get this in there because it again it's not a fad and i i, I would hear this from professors and deans that oh the technology is, is is all ICO it's 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 a boom it's a bust um, crypto it's volatile and, and unfortunately that's what's in their heads and so I'm back to educating them and so now we're starting to get across this chasm where professors are becoming advocates of the technology which is great we need more professors to advocate blockchain in order for it to become more of a, a an opportunistic like idea to get it implemented into computer science degrees programs, whether you major or minor in it, I just want it in there. Um, so we're, it's great to see that, but what we've noticed, you know, at least in the past year, what I've seen is blockchain societies um, started to, to kind of be the alternative uh, to what they weren't getting. So I think that's cool. That shows that, um, not to say you were smarter than the colleges, but you saw something that they didn't. And here you are getting ready to get taught and to learn and to get really into the nuances of blockchain development. And that's what makes me excited about this is because uh, the future is promising. Uh, you're not caught up in the negative stigmas that I just presented to you um, and that I still sometimes have to remind myself it's not a part of it. Um, and you see that the real world use cases, the practicality, the, the excitement behind why do you wanna invest your time, your resources, your money into learning this stuff for the betterment of what decentralization can certainly do in, in our our world you know the web web 2 right now just isn't working um and we see a lot of pain points in that and so these organizations and um a lot of these links i, I put links in the, in the um slides so afterwards jacob you can send these out but uh there's over 150 blockchain clubs now just in the us mostly right now um and i've been affiliated with quite a bit of them um, and it's exciting to see, to be quite honest. Um, I know in the Bay Area, there's a lot of, you know, UC Davis, UC Berkeley. It's great to see uh, blockchain at Berkeley. Uh, you know, some of these kind of organizations really take education to the next level and do some incubation, internships, externships, at some of these startups. Um, and, you know, that's, that's definitely what we want. Um, but ultimately, I'm starting to see blockchain societies um, start to become like its own DAO. Um, which is really cool. There's some really good use cases behind what a DAO can do on the governance side at the collegiate level. And that's a, a completely different conversation that is just, you know, scratching the surface on what the capability is that I've kind of getting involved a little bit more. Uh, so more to come on that. So keep an, keep an eye on that. Um, and then conferences are a great place um, for networking. Um, I'm sure if you haven't been to them, um, now that the world's opening up, you know, like consensus, um, we have uh, DevCon is a great one. Um, I know they just had the Miami Bitcoin. I don't know if any of you went to that. Um, I didn't, but uh, it sounded like it was just nice to kind of be back on site to really just kind of chat with each other, catch up. How the hell have you been? What have you been working on? Because we're all sick of these virtual Zoom calls. Um, and it's, uh, it's nice to be able to get back in action again. 
Uh, the last one I was at was Prague at the Czech Republic, um, where they did DevCon. I don't know which one. I think it was five. And then they did Osaka. But there's a lot of them out there. And these conferences are great. I would definitely encourage you to be representatives and to volunteer, if you will, um, your time to whether run a workshop, um, because that's what helps the branding side. If, if your goal is to get jobs or to grow your, your ecosystem or group or, you know, get a startup exposed, I've seen more success in people taking time to speak at conferences than those that are just kind of marketing their white paper and doing that organic approach. Just because, I mean, I think conferences are a way where we come, come together and, and we're really keen and eager to learn about what, what, what's there to come? What am I not, you know, recognizing now? What are things that I can learn from each other? Um, the great thing about the Web3 world is we're really not fighting like the Web2 does. Uh, we do have this common ground and this kind of unanimity amongst everyone that we want this to be adopted. And there's a lot of work to be had. And so, again, say this over and over, education is going to be imperative uh, to make it work. At the end, I'll leave. I'll have um, time for all these questions, too, as I'm sure you may have some. Um, real world use cases are important. Um, what I saw, so I ran Truffle University for a few years. We did live instructor-led training by Kevin Bluer, who still works at Truffle. Um, if you ever want to talk with them, let me know. I'm happy to make an intro. Um, but what we recognize is that bad blockchain education led to developers creating bad dApps. That someone might say, well, then that's, you know, they're, they're congesting the ecosystem on Ethereum. That's why gas is so high. That's a stretch. But nonetheless, when, when you're trying to make blockchain you know, decentralized applications, um, a reality in the public sector, you want to be able to provide the, the practical use case behind what, what you're building and what it's for. There is a, there is a kind of a product management side of it, our product development, if you will, and go to market strategies that oftentimes is, is forgotten. I think we sometimes get so focused on how do I build it, the technology, and then the developer is excited. They learn Solidity or Viper, uh, and they start, you know, creating these things and then deploy to mainnet without having the concept as, is this DAP even make sense? Um, does it, th there's, is there a real world use case that can show some kind of ROI behind what I've just built? Um, is, does the market demand for something like this? These are questions that we want to start asking as you learn the technology. If you can do that in parallel, you're setting yourselves up for success. And then if you can kind of add in, um, you know, I, I guess partnerships or, or mentorships, those who can kind of be very um, raw and, and potentially harsh on your DAP, I think is way more valuable than somebody always saying like, yes, it's cool because it's a blockchain DAP. Like that, that, that idea, unfortunately, kind of deters and I think it kind of hurts and harms the developer. You want people to be critical on your DAP. So when you're, when you're creating this project at the end, if everyone's saying like, yeah, it kicks ass, that's awesome, cool. But hopefully you'll get folks that are like a little bit more you know, critiquing on what you've built because you need to ask more questions in order to kind of come up with a better version of that. Because that's the beauty of technology, right? We have versions. You can start with, you know, phase zero or version 0 0.01 and then get a bunch of critiques and make a 0 0.02 and then work your way up to finally you can release a V1. Um, and so that's the idea of like kind of this MVP POC. Um, once you learn it is you are in the same time, understanding go-to-market strategies, market analysis, competitive analysis, what's out there now, um, and then what are the practical real-world use cases. When you can do that, that kind of springboards into the education because now those on the outside that are seeing what you've built can actually understand what the application and what its intention is and how, why they should you know look into you know leveraging what you've built whether it is a return on investment, so it's it's more money back in their pocket, or at least in a corporation's mindset, or if it's more efficient with time, <clears throat> all great things. But those are things that you want to make sure that you're emphasizing as you start to think about what you want to build. So it's not just technology. It's also just the, the market in, in general, what you want to do. Major enterprises are also another thing. If you look, there, again, I skipped this, but go to, um, what is it? Uh, Shoot, I can't think of it. State of the DApps. Um, I love that site. I think there's always, it says over 3,700 DApps right now on multiple blockchains, Ethereum, um, and, and plenty of others, um, Hyperledger and whatnot. But the cool thing is you can see all the, the ones that are in production um, that are actually having real transactions happening. And I will always say when people are trying to figure out, you know, 
I figured out what I want to build, but how do I scale it? Go find apps that are similar. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, that are kind of like yours. Connect with them on LinkedIn because they will actually show the founders of those particular dApps. Go on LinkedIn or, or sometimes they'll just have a Twitter or whatnot. Start chatting with them because, again, in our Web3 world, they're not going to see you and, and realize, oh, you're building something similar to mine. I don't want to talk to you. I haven't got that vibe yet. Um, oftentimes it's like, oh, dude, you're from Truffle. I might be building a completely different smart contract tool, but um, I'm happy to chat. And you can kind of bounce ideas off each other. So State of Adapts is a great kind of uh, practical platform to network and to ultimately kind of scale and grow your idea that you've built that is a POC right now into something that's in fully fledged production um, to with your ultimate aim, whatever the roadmap might look like. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm running with a cold right now. So I'm making it through. Major enterprises um, is another way that we've seen within consensus um, kind of show more of the modern day skeptical folks that blockchain is here to stay. Um, a couple examples is Uber, um, PayPal, MasterCard, Visa. Um, if you go click on the major enterprises link, one of the places that I like is Forbes 50 uh, has their, their blockchain and you know, under 50, I think is what the most 50 major enterprises that are using blockchain and their practical applications. Um, that's one of the reasons where I originally started chatting with MasterCard is they're building their own proprietary blockchain. Ultimately, now they're working with consensus. Uh, but what they're trying to do is great because they, they understand that the TPS is the transaction per second on MasterCard is, is fast. And they also know our problem with our TPS being 15 seconds. It's terrible. It's slow. Our bottleneck is our bottleneck and we recognize it. We're not going to hide behind that. But we are working on fixing that. There's some great solutions to that. I would definitely check out Layer 2 Solutions if you haven't already um, on what they're, what some of the ways that we're going to be able to kind of help, you know, temporarily fix and resolve that until kind of E2 phases roll out um, with sharding and whatnot. Um, the Force 50 is a great link. Um, and it, again, they're, they're, they're exposing who's involved in the project. So I would take time to go find the developers that are, are working with some of these ones. Um, and I would connect with them and then, you know, set up a one-on-one -on -one call for like 20, 30 minutes, just get to know what they're building. Most of them can give you enough information without violating any non-compete to give you some inspiration, to give you ideas, to give you back. Um, it's a great way to get from state of the dApps where you get more of that startup-y kind of encouragement to go into some more of these enterprises where a lot of the devs are willing to take time and chat with you. Um, you put those two together, you're, you're setting yourself up for success. Um, and then kind of, you know, springboarding off of that, um, many of you probably seen a lot of the buzzwords, DeFi, NFT, DAO, those three things. And there's, there's plenty of more, but those are what we see a lot, especially if you Google trends and some of the SEO will kind of show, at least at one point, NFTs were trending uh, more than the election at one point, if I remember right. And that was because of people and some of these other um, crazy things that uh, made a lot of freaking money. I still don't understand to this day, but um, that's what the te new technology does. But DeFi is a great kind of um, platform to use when it comes to educating somebody that may not understand or want to know the nuances of the technology, but they're really looking more practical kind of use cases to like, what does DeFi even do? And I like to affiliate it and say, okay, you understand what centralized finance looks like and then give some real practical, like problematic areas that they can certainly agree and attest to like, okay, yes, this makes sense. If I have a centralized authority that's in control of all of my data and I have very sensitive information, my bank account information, I'm trying to transfer money to someone. I just wired money to somebody who's in uh, Puerto Rico. It's still being uh, reviewed and it's four days. Um, and I have no idea if it's going to make it there or not. Uh, and that's th those are things that are frustrating, especially if you're on a time crunch. Peer to peer should not be that long when it comes to me that you can trust me. And, you know, I trust Jacob and I want to send him money. Um, it should be instantaneous. And so the blockchain, the practicality is a great way of explaining why that makes sense. Because because those that are on the outside, they're going to need more of that kind of blue sky 20,000 foot real world use cases. They're not going to care about the smart contract side of it. Um, and, you know, you can get into that depending on, on your audience. Um, but, you know, those are great ways to kind of explain uh, the, the ideas behind what you're ultimately wanting to create um, within your own project during this coursework. Um, the dev, the blockchain dev, um, one of the cool things about it is, you know, it's, it's a catch 22 because 
uh, you know, consensus is hiring. I mean, the blockchain ecosystem in general, everybody's hiring. They need blockchain developers. They need smart contract auditors. Uh, and we can't find them. Uh, they are hard to freaking find. And it, we would, one would say there's a cesspool of them, but there's not. That typically they're either happy with where they're at or they're, they're creating their own startup and rightfully so. Uh, funding these days is a little bit easier than a traditional angel investments in, in ways that you would get funding. And so a lot of them have good runway for one, two, three years to actually build something out. You don't need a long runway to make something happen. That's the beauty of it. If you do it right, you can get to where you want to go with nine, 10 months worth of funding with a few devs to make it happen. Um, I've seen that and it's exciting to see those um, examples, you know, kind of come into fruition. Uh, but some interesting stats that I found, uh, I am partnered with Hire.com, but they, they had this um, shortage of like, they've had so many of their clients that were looking for blockchain developers, but they didn't have enough candidates. Um, they, there were very few of them. And that was what spurred on the idea of why we wanted to create Truffle University is we wanted to fill that chasm of we needed to increase uh, more developers that were right now just in the web two. Let's get them to become web three dev, understand blockchain, the nuances, the complexities, the solidity, governance, tokenization, security, yada, 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 get them up to speed because the demand for them was so high. And to be quite honestly, it was a great lucrative time. And I think it still very much is. Blockchain developers get paid really good money and you don't necessarily need a ton of experience you know working experience if you will like you would if you were trying to go into like core java development or, or becoming a python developer it's been around for a while so to say i went to code academy for a six month camp and expect a six-figure salary it's kind of unrealistic but to come out of a blockchain boot camp to have some real world um blockchain uh, projects um some repos that can kind of show that some contributions to the open source uh, network community that can get you there a lot faster i've seen so many people make good money and again not all about the money but it is nice to know that that demand gets you to where you can get compensated well um so that's i think super important to, to remember that is your goal is to take this course not only to be able to teach others but ultimately hopefully get into a job whether it's a startup or an enterprise um, and then feel free to ping me later. I, I have a lot of connections and I know a lot of people looking and I would look like the rock star if I can refer anybody who's got some skills in solidity development blockchain. Um, I often see the prerequisite of those who are getting, they come to me and say, where do I start? Like I have some technical capabilities. Um, I'm excited about blockchain, but I don't know any of the blockchain tooling, any of that. We typically see at least with Truffle and consensus JavaScript, TypeScript, is great to start um, and it's very much transferable to over to solidity um, and it will make it a little bit easier but if you've done you know dot net c sharp and all of that doesn't mean you can't learn it um, i've just noticed a lot of folks in that particular realm with javascript tend to learn faster just because it feels a little bit more uh, familiar uh, than those in the kind of the Microsoft tech stack world. But again, not not isolating one or the other. Um, just statistically what we've seen when we train and taught folks, um, we've just noticed a, a lot faster comprehension on um, core blockchain development with those that have that particular form of background. Um, and then I've kind of touched this already, but Web2 is big. There's a lot of Web2 developers. And with you and your knowledge that you're going to learn, to go into that ecosystem is a lot more advantageous than to go into the existing blockchain ecosystem and upscaling devs that already kind of know this. A lot of developers that I work with that have been doing blockchain development for a few years, they're not interested in the basic core fundamental courses. Um, and there's not even much like advanced, nuanced, granular blockchain development courses because we're still creating that wheel. There's no wheel invented. Um, and so it's, it doesn't really make sense to invest all your time into our ecosystem. I always say, go out into that big web channel. That's where you're going to find a lot of low hanging fruit. And that can come through conferences, webinars, speaking engagements, writing blogs, Reddit articles, distributing that to your own network and then using keywords and tags to kind of highlight that. So don't just tag crypto, blockchain, ERC 20, Ethereum. That's partly, but use some web two vernacular that's familiar in their world. Find ways to kind of highlight what they're comfortable, the developers that have been doing this five, 10 years, and maybe tag TypeScript, JavaScript, and then Solidity. Show how there's a correlation with that. You're going to get a lot more attention if you're looking to kind of expand your network and to teach, or if you're looking to kind of get a job. Um, so that's, you're going to see a lot more uh, results. And then 
it's all about growing our ecosystem and blockchain. Um, and I think I love this program and what you're trying to do and what Jacob is spearheading. It's awesome because at the end of the day, we need more developer activity. We need more tools. We need better tools. We need more contributions to our existing tools and with more contributors and, and different ways of going about that, especially with tokenizing. I think it's a great way to now you can, you know, essentially make some money to contribute for the greater good of decentralization. So it's kind of a win, 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 um, which traditionally it's, it's, you know, old school is you contribute really to kind of get your resume built out, have some repos and projects to kind of highlight and then hopefully get a job out of it. Now we're seeing this new paradigmatic shift about I can now contribute and I can get funding out of it. Or I can I can receive some kind of whether it's a token, I can convert to fiat. There's a lot of cool use cases out there that I've been a part of and I'm seeing more and more of. Um, it's just that's what Web3 does. You, you look at things differently. Um, you're not your prototypical channel route um, that has been going on for, for years. And then finally, what blockchain is not, I touched it. It's not how to make money trading on exchanges, Binance chain, uh, you know, there's so many of them. I, I've lost track. Um, I say that this is my little like stool where I like to rant quite a bit. People know this about me because when they find out where I've been and this is gonna happen to you, I promise you, uh, when they find out what you do, you're gonna get asked about crypto price trends and they're gonna think of you as a TA and they're gonna want you to give your best educated financial decision so they can know which tokens and which which shit coins I can go invest in and which you know second mortgages that can I take out to put all my money in and I you know it is what it is I still get it to this day I smile I would encourage you to just say the same thing I'm not a TA guy this is not financial advice if you say those things you're protected especially for being recorded um, even say this even right now this gets distributed I'm not a TA or financial advice but you will get that a lot because Naturally, what the media has kind of put more of an emphasis on is the price and the volatility. And, and they'd certainly like to highlight those that are the Bitcoin millionaires and, and people that have made good money because that's attractive. And then you get a bunch of these kind of scammers and these, these get rich quick schemes and these MLMs in the blockchain world or the, the Web3 world that promise you to a massive four or five X return on your uh, crypto investment. And then you get caught up in it and then you lose all your money. Um, you're going to get a lot of that. Blockchain isn't Elon Musk uh, or any other celebrity. Um, if, if there's any celebrity that I feel like kind of knows this stuff, I would definitely like to plug Mark Cuban. I think he definitely, he, he's impressed me from some of the videos I watched him. He definitely knows his stuff. Um, but when when you're kind of falling into that trap and this, this gets more in line, again, completely different topic, but social tokens um, are becoming a big trend. I'm sure you've understood, heard of it. Celebrities are obviously gonna jump on that. Um, if they can increase their tokens value, they're going to do whatever they got to do. Um, you'll see more of that celebrity world get involved and into it. And so, again, another uphill battle, another hurdle for you is just going back to the fundamentals, going back to the first, first, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Best first principles. The framework that you're going to get established during this course is going to ultimately help you explain, teach, solidify, validate what you're doing and then ultimately adapt because with the right framework, blockchain technology, and there's gonna be new tools that are out there and there's gonna be new world practical use cases that are gonna be something different than it is now. If you have that framework, you're gonna be able to pivot. And that's where it becomes essential with what you're gonna get learned and taught. Um, and I think I would encourage you to continue to learn even beyond this course. There's lots of other good resources. Again, ask me um, later on if you are more interested in any other. Uh, education material sources, places that I respect that I would definitely encourage you to go into. Um, and it's, you know, it's just exciting times. Um, you know, it's great to see, um, you know, when the news does get it right of what's actually happening. Um, and, uh, you know, I think the sky's the limit for what y'all are trying to do and uh, just continue to stay motivated. And then again, don't forget, it's not just a technology. It's also about the product and, and the go-to-market strategies. You put those together and you get a bunch of critical feedback on what you're doing you built something pretty kick-ass. So that's my spiel. And I, I went right at hopefully not too long, 45 minutes. I want to leave some time at the end for questions. Um, I've seen it all, but uh, again, I, I had fun doing this and uh, hopefully you guys will too when you uh, kind of get more into the, the nuances of uh, you know what you're learning. All right, thank you, Scott. Thank you so much. That was a great talk. I 
yeah, um, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time. Uh, just wanted to point out a couple things throughout your talk um, that you know um, we're going to go through in this course and stuff like that. The tools that you mentioned, Truffle, Infra, and MetaMask, we're going to use all of those in the course. So really glad that uh, those got a shout out. Um, speaking of starting our own workshops, that's the goal. The the end goal of this course is to equip people to you know. Uh, take the education that they've received and, you know, give it back to the community. And speaking of maintaining community, um, that's what we're forming right here is a new community. And don't just walk away from this course and say, okay, I took the course. Now I'm certified. I'm going to go out on my own. No, this is, this is a community where you can come back. You can talk with these people. You know, I want these connections that we're forming right here to last beyond just the six weeks that we have together. Um, and, uh, let's see. Yeah. Resume building, job placement, all good stuff. Oh, and then, um, speaking of JavaScript and TypeScript, um, that's, I write JavaScript and TypeScript almost on a daily basis. And I've been writing uh, JavaScript for 10 years now. And so I came from JavaScript to Solidity. What you're saying, Scott, was totally true. Um, it definitely made it easier knowing, uh, JavaScript to then come and learn Solidity.